Hello everyone. Welcome to the Wild Side with Wildlife SOS. My name is Karthik Satyanarayan. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Wildlife SOS. Today we are celebrating World Environment Day and we've got a surprise guest on our show. It's Jim Serb, a very talented actor in Bollywood and a very dear friend. It's great to see you. Cheers. Welcome to the wild side. Cheers. Welcome to the wild side, Jim. Great. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So, you know, uh, today we're celebrating World Environment Day. And right. uh, you're on our first episode uh, of, this, of this new show, um, The Wild Side with Wildlife SOS. So um, it's an absolute delight and a pleasure to have you on the show. But, First of all, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. And let me ask you, how have you been dealing with this lockdown? Um, How's everyone at home? Are you safe? I'm totally safe. Um, everyone at home, uh, my whole family is split up, unfortunately. Um, I'm here in, uh, in Kar, in Bandra and Bombay. My mom is in South Bombay. My dad had to um uh, happen to be in dubai so he got stuck there God. and my sister is in boston no she's actually in north carolina just now um she's the only one that got lucky she got stuck with her boyfriend so the two of them at least have some company the rest of us are all kind of separate and uh the more people i talk to the more it becomes clear i've i only just moved in by myself um uh last october Otherwise, I always had flatmates. And boy, I am missing flatmates right now, you know? Like, uh, just a simple thing like having, being able to cook together and have a meal together and all of these things that you take for granted are suddenly... I'm, I'm, I'm missing them glaringly. All of my, all of my good friends that, are, uh, that have coupled up for the first time in my life, like being in a, you know, steady relationship seems very appealing. <laughs> but the second day of lockdown, I got a little kitten um, off the street. Her name is Mimi. And she is also driving me nuts, Karthik. A good mixture of like wanting to squeeze her with like love and wanting to just crush her face. Be like, don't play with my AirPods, please, Mimi. God's sakes, you knocked it off the table. And th I, I woke up to one AirPod like in the litter, another AirPod like on the other side of the house. The thing having been knocked off, she's destroying all the plants. I don't know what to do. Do you have any advice? Yes, seriously, buy two more pairs of AirPods. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everyone says. Everyone I ask for some advice about like some kind of cat disciplinary action. Everyone's just like, you're a bitch now. That's it. It's finished. Like, that's that. Like, you just give up the plants, you know? I've, um, sorry, I just want to make this point right at the beginning because I've generally been avoiding these like um, Zoom lives or Insta lives or okay. anything like that uh, only because um, I do feel like a bit of a fraud uh i'll explain because um you know when i watch um when i watch other people going on insta live or whatever and being like oh my god so bored but look we're cooking or you know whatever it's like you're speaking from a well-stocked apartment and your biggest concern is like boredom and house management i mean those are tiny 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 concerns considering the, the nature of this particular beast and how people just don't have homes and don't and can't social distance and us uh, or are stuck with abusers or are addicts and are stuck inside their house or have to walk thousands and thousands and thousands of miles with no help or aid whatsoever. So I've generally been avoiding these kinds of things because it's like i don't want my perspective i don't want the perspective of someone in a well-stocked apartment who's like oh, i guess i'm bored like oh, i guess 
I guess I value, you know, my maid a lot more now and my house help. It's like, yeah, well, you should have been doing that already, frankly. And uh, so I just get more interested in people on the front lines, people who I just want to hear other people's perspectives than the usual type of people I hear on. So I just wanted to just like make that clear from the beginning. However, absolutely. I, you know, I love everything that you guys are doing. And so I want to support it in whatever way I can. So that's why I'm here. Yeah. That's very, very sweet of you, Jim, that you're so concerned and, and compassionate. And it comes across very strongly in, in what you just said that, yes, you know, I think people who are in lockdown don't often realize how fortunate they are, how lucky they are. They have everything they need. And everything. the only thing that they sometimes don't see is how the people who don't have that, they're not in their house, they have to walk thousands of miles. I completely understand. And I think this lockdown is an opportunity for people to actually sit back and realize those values. Humans are nature. Everything we create is nature. It's all come out of a natural setting. We are not separate from it in any capacity. We need to treat human beings, other human beings, well, just like we need to treat trees and animals and the entire ecosystem well, because um, it's all so interconnected in ways that we can't even possibly fathom. Absolutely. I've been reading this great book by, um, oh, sorry. I've been reading this great book by Peter uh, Wallabin called The Secret Network of Nature. And he says, you know, like, he, he, like for example, there was this one, there's this one little chapter about how nitrogen in salmon makes uh, trees around a river grow a lot faster in certain areas. And they would have never discovered the connection between them if not for finding a particular type of nitrogen found only in, uh, you know, uh, like algae under the water in the trees. And then they put the two together and they figured out that, oh, so years that the salmon have been have have had uh, have not been as numerous the trees have not grown as tall that year and um and he just talks about how and each chapter is about a different thing like sometimes it's about bark beetles or sometimes it's about wolves or sometimes it's about salmon uh and basically his conclusions nine times out of ten is it's impossible to fathom like i can try my best to explain to you how one new addition to an ecosystem can affect things. But there are things that, because the, a tree's timeline is like, can be 3000 years. So there's no way that I, in my 70, 80 years can possibly fathom the real effects of this included thing in the ecosystem. And I've been finding it fascinating. It is fascinating, is it? You're absolutely right. The way you, you put it so beautifully, it is important for us to understand the complex nature uh, of nature, you know, complex nature that exists between the relationships of trees, plants, animals, and human beings. And if you don't understand yeah. and respect that complex relationship, I think we are doomed. You're absolutely right. We're looking for more pandemics and we're looking for more problems. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, there was a funny meme that got shared at one point, which was, um, it was like, uh, they're like, uh, there's like a little human diver, you know, and there was um, this like little, uh, like a little shark going to eat the, the, the mouth open to eat the diver. And it was like, um, uh, it said something like uh, COVID-19. And then there was a bigger shark underneath it, which was a uh, economic collapse. And then there was a huge shock underneath that, which was climate change. <laughs> so it was like, we always get focused by the tiny shark, you know, and we think that's our only enemy. And then we focus only on that. And we try to sort that out. And then we're like, okay, now we're bored with sorting this out. Okay, we've sorted it out enough. We've all been inside enough now. We're going out now, whatever, come what may. And we just forget that there are much bigger issues that humanity in general needs to address is to move away from like empty capitalism as being the final goal, the only goal. When did money become the only goal, Kartik? When? Has this always been the case? I've been asking myself this a lot. I think, you know, people 
became so materialistic that everything is not seen in values of, of human relationships or the beauty of nature. You know, I think that has gone out of the window and it's time for, for people like yourself to, to wake people up. It's, it's time like people like you and me get together and that's what the show is about. You know, waking people up to the wild side that exists around us, but we ignore it and we get lost in, in the shark, as you correctly put. You know, we've got to start going back. And, you know, I, I remember when you were there in Agra, you know, just a short, a few, some, some months ago. Uh, and I, I remember how, you know, how much of passion and compassion you put into doing that. And I think that is what, what showed us that you are a true, you know, uh, uh, a man of the earth, so to say. You know, it, it did connect us. And I wanted to hear from you what you felt from that experience. Did that ground you to the roots? You know, I've been wanting to do something like it for a while. And I can't remember. Oh, right, 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 right. Shirina had reached out to me about um, something related to elephant sculptures being made in, in Bombay or, or some art, elephant art related thing. And I remember just being like, um, this was the first, this was the first thing where I, I, I had been like reached out to, to support this cause. And I was like, you know, I, I really don't care about the side of it. That's in Bombay that like, you know, that is a fundraiser. I want to like see what the actual animals are experiencing. And, um, my dad used to make fun of me when a kid, when I was a kid, because, uh, I'd always say that I wanted to be a zoologist or. You know, I wanted to be a marine biologist and all of that stuff. And um, those were my first, like, you know, Jacques Cousteau. And I was just obsessed with animals as a kid. Um, uh, and so this was the first opportunity that I, I found that where I could actually go to the source of people doing something that I thought was important and, and necessary. And I just loved it, man. I just like loved it. I loved walking around. I loved talking to all of the people that worked there. I loved, uh, you, you, it's not that I was interacting with the animals necessarily. It's more, I just liked to watch them. I just liked watching how they were, how they behaved there, the kind of life that they had gotten. And of course, uh, it did leave me quite sad. Um, <clears throat> simply because of the everything you had explained about what the the slot bears actually go through to have been in the place that they are in or even the elephants and uh so it was a it is it was kind of a bittersweet mix of being inspired by you guys and and everything that y'all are doing and also being just a bit sad that we can, we, we're so okay doing this. We just don't, it's like we, it's like there's some part of our humanity or our empathy that has just been turned off. And I don't know how, and I don't know why, and I don't know when. And I know that also a lot of people are struggling with a lot simpler things like we're hungry, you know, to even get to let's have you know, uh, but that's not true. That's not true. So many times, uh, like for example, when I found Mimi, uh, she was, uh, on the side of the road. When I went back to look for her, it's a whole story, but when I went back to look for her, uh, I met a auto guy who's been sleeping in his auto the whole time, but he's been giving her milk every single day for a week now, taking care of her, finding milk from somehow. That's it. I, I really don't know when this disconnect happened, if it's always been there, if it's something we can nurture and develop. I believe I that. I mean, I guess we can. I believe that we can teach people to be more compassionate. And sometimes yep. it's a pandemic or a cyclone to wake people up. And I think, you know, we have an opportunity in front of us to let people realize and understand that, okay, guys, you know, this is an opportunity for you to realize what difference we can make with just being compassionate. You don't need, mm. you know, millions of dollars. You just need a kind, you just need a kind gesture. That's all it takes sometimes, you know? Yeah. Um, 
but but you know this is where i think it's it's unusual for celebrities like yourself to come and volunteer at the agra bear rescue facility and the elephant conservation and care center and our entire team who works on the front line loved it they enjoyed having you there and seeing you work shoulder to shoulder with them and i wanted to ask you what your favorite activity was i'm guessing picking up elephant dung was your top top <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mind that part so much mostly because I was just like embarrassed at my like hesitancy when I would see the people actually picking it up who just like picking it up and putting it in the thing and I was like okay I guess it's not a big deal just get over it you know and then you're doing it yourself um I guess my favorite thing was probably because um when we were building um when we were building a uh, what's it called for the bears um the a platform structures Climbing. an enrichment uh, structure yeah when we were building one of these enrichment structures for the bears and while we were doing it uh bima uh found um um a uh, sand boa slithering past and we were looking at the sand boa and i was kind of like holding it and it was like moving through my hands and and then after we made it and we we put all of the structures uh, i mean we we hid all of the like the honey and the uh watermelons and fruits and etc all over it and then we came out on the other side and i remember all of the bears kind of trundled in and you see them trundling in and they're a bit like you know goofy looking for lack of a better word they're a bit goofy you know and you see this bear like trundling in and i'm standing right by the um the um the barbed wire and uh, or the the electric fence and uh, which and i was thinking in my head like oh yeah see look it's not that you know it's not that bad like they say that if you see a bear in the wild you should try to become as big as you can you know in case it's like running at you and you just become big and you scream and whatever and i was like you know i think i can do it i think i could i think i could do that and uh, one of the watermelons rolled off the um the enrichment center and the bear came down to look at it and he looked at it and he looked up at me and i was close to the fence and close to the watermelon and i guess it became a thing of who's going to get the watermelon and he immediately got up on his hind legs and made that like kind of noise and like move forward and i just like froze in complete <laughs> terror and i was thinking no chance if a bear came at me would i make myself big and say anything i would be rooted to the spot in pure terror <laughs> but i wanted to ask you sorry what's going on just now with uh, the centers and oh. and covid how is it all being managed is it so working smoothly still thank you, thank you so much for asking and thank you for your concern it is challenging to organize the logistics and administer medical supplies and food that has been mm-hmm. very challenging so we mm-hmm. every one of us has been kind of reaching out and raising donations to you know help with buying masks gloves hand sanitizer medical supplies food supplies that's been the biggest challenge so we've been kind of okay. asking around and and raising donations but thankfully everybody is safe the animals are safe and our team you know has of course been trapped in different locations but they're all doing their best to provide the animals that the care they need so i'm very very fortunate that we have a dedicated and a very committed team who will not give up on animals and uh, you That's know good even, to hear. even if it's putting them in a lot of risk you know i mean they they are willing to go beyond their brief you know go out on a limb to make sure that the animals are taken care of so i'm very grateful to our frontline team for staying out there and helping these animals that's great so we have a small segment called elephant in the room <laughs> okay <laughs> and uh, and i'm going to ask you some random questions and you have to answer them as quickly as you can okay are you ready yeah what is your spirit animal uh, um himalayan condor nice uh if a movie was made of your life what genre would it would it be genre uh mm-hmm. dark comedy <laughs> very much so i've i've really seen you acting and i really love the way you slash things around and <laughs> <laughs> that's the only roles i get what can i do i have to slash them around <laughs> very cool. you're very cool it's amazing 
And where's the first place you would go if you were invisible? Uh, oh my. Almost anywhere. I mean, I, I love being a voyeur. Oh my goodness. I could go almost anywhere. I'd just be standing in the side of your room and just watching you as what you're doing, Karthik. Oh, I see he's doing this thing now. You, oh, me, okay. you see me walk, feeding baby birds for most of <laughs> yeah. so much parenting to beauty now. We are inundated with calls during the okay. with baby birds and all kinds of animals. So, yeah, because we're right. off, we are our, lock, our hotline team continue to run throughout the lockdown. Mask, wow. and the rest, but every day snakes and snakes and bullets and my God, we've had so many calls. I, I would say in the last three months, we probably uh, responded to over six hundred calls. It's been. Do you think that um, for the animal population, at least right now, COVID nineteen is a good thing? I would say yes. I think the lockdown and the fact that people have gone away have given animals an opportunity to kind of come out, venture out into place spaces. Animals have had an opportunity to venture out into spaces where human beings dominated. You know, right? They had a chance to get out there. And we've had so many calls. You know, elephants getting into cities, lepers moving near temples, civets yeah. to colleges, and things like that. So, yeah, yeah it's That's great. Uh, it's been a great time for the animals. Going back to the rapid question. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. No, no, that's fine. Uh, what was the last series that you binge watched? Patal Lok. Nice. And did you enjoy it? It's really good. Jay Deep, uh, who plays Hatiram, is probably the best performance in an Indian web series of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I'm going to watch it then. Thank you for that. Yeah, he's, he's really good. Okay, last one. If a genie. Huh? Grant you a wish. What would it yeah. be? Like a thousand more wishes, you know. <laughs> well, that doesn't that doesn't work. You only get one. This is not... Well, if I was given a wish, I would probably wish to be uh, ha to be able to have the superpower to speak with animals. You know oh wow, I mean? yeah, that would be great. And what they're speaking and I mean, they'd be cursing the hell out of human beings though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Count to three. One. And just say whatever. Yeah. Two. Uh, three. Go. Uh, I'd like to. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah. have you ever seen a wild tiger? Have I ever seen? Yes. Oh, great. Where? Where was that? Um, in. Uh... Uh, what's that one up near uh, the border near Nepal? Um, Jim Corbett. Oh yeah, nice. One there and one, and two in Kanha National Park. Very nice, very nice. Tiger Reserve, yeah. And uh, do you have any message for our viewers, guys? Um, uh, try to go and volunteer at Wildlife SOS if you can. Try and donate if you can. Uh, find a way to get involved with it in whatever way you can get involved. I think not just the facility they've set up and um, the life they've given sloth bears and elephants, but even the story as to how they've reached that place. It's just so full of... Beautiful compassion. I think you will be inspired and you'll go back to your life feeling richer. That's excellent. That's very, very, very sweet. I must add, you know, since your visit to the Elephant Constitution Care Center, we built a full fledged elephant hospital over there. Yeah. 10,000 square, 12,000 square feet. And you, it's time for you to come again once this I think it's time. is over. We have a hydrotherapy pool. Imagine the largest jacuzzi in India. <laughs> and the elephants absolutely love it. Oh, they man. get in there and we have 21 jets, high pressure jets that pummels them with water. And they initially are a little bit skeptical, but once they get in there, they love it. And it helps them you know, uh, deal with painful muscle issues, 
sprains, right. all the problems that they've come with, it gives them so much relief. So we have right. India's only elephant hospital and India's first giant jumbo jacuzzi. So it's time for you right. to find out. Absolutely. Am I allowed to test out the jacuzzi? Like, can I dive in? Is it possible? Yes. All right, cool. <laughs> well, okay, Kartik. I, I must thank you. It's been absolutely amazing having you on the show. Thank you for spending the time and joining us. It's been great speaking with you. And we look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Stay always, home. Always stay, lovely chatting. And stay safe. Stay thank home, you. stay safe. Bye bye. Bye. Well, that's our show for today. But before we go, please remember that the COVID pandemic has taken a serious toll on animals and people here in India. The Wildlife SOS Helpline is trying to address this crisis, and our rapid response mobile units are trained to rescue animals in distress. They are working round the clock to help every animal that we get, receive a call about. At the same time, they're also maintaining social distancing and keeping themselves safe. Administering medical and food supplies is extremely difficult. And if you would like to help these animals and the staff who are caring for them, all you need to do is donate whatever you can. And if you would like to make a donation, please go to www.wildlifefestivals.org slash donate and help make a difference. You can also sign the petition to help protect elephants by going to www.refusetoride.org.